So we saw an example where we use the company called MicroDrive. And here we're going to say, what if we don't just grab and have free cash flows just drop from heaven, right? What if we have to derive the free cash flows? And we can do it with just a few assumptions that we can use to create a projection model followed by free cash flows, followed by valuation. So the data from the most recent years are as follows. Sales of 2000, which is 2 million, and then operations, operating capital of 1120, and then the ratio of operating capital to sales, or operating profitability rather, is no path to buy by sales is 4.5. And then capital requirements is where we take operating capital divided by sales to get 56. So we take 1120 divided by uh, 2000 and we get 56. And the target weighted average cost of capital is 9%. So that, that is given. And we're going to do the following steps. First, we'll do the operating, uh, estimating, the, estimate the, the no path. But we have to build a model to go out for the next four years. So we're going to, in general, start with free cash flows, then determine the horizon value, bring back information to PVs to get enterprise value, and then get to the common share value. We've done that. Now, this will be our third time. You can tell I'm practicing it so you can uh, have repetitions and remember how to do it. All right, so let's go forecasting. So here's the day we had, so 9% WAC, 2,000 of sales, operating capital of 1120, uh, no path to buy by sales, 4%, operating capital of 5, uh, 56. So when we look at, um, oh, and then we're given growth rates. So the growth rates are going to be 10, 8, 5, and 5. So we're going to stabilize here after year 3. And the no path and operating capital, you'll see these stay the same. So we can project our numbers. First, what's the actual for year zero? We're given that at 2000. What is our sales for year one? It's plus last year times one plus the growth rate. In this case, it's that 10%. Then we do the same formula across for the four years. So let's just do year three so you can see how it looks. That equals year two times one plus year three's growth rate. And year four, likewise, takes year three times one plus the year four growth rate. So that's that. No pat is equal to sale. I mean, yes, sales times the no pat percent. And that's right here. And we can copy that across. Okay, so that gets us no pat. So next we have to work with operating capital. So operating capital we know uh, was 56% of sales. So we can estimate for each of the years the operating capital. So let's start with year one, uh, 2200 times the assumption of 56, copy that across, and we get that. So operating cap in the base year was given here at 1120. So the delta of the increase is equal to this year minus last year. And we copy that across to get the increment. Now we're ready to get free cash flows, which is no pat minus increase in operating uh, capital. And we copy that across. And we see a pattern of starting in negative, but we, can, we get better each year. This minus the base year divided by the base year. And we can copy that across. So we see some pretty dramatic jumps here where it goes from negative to positive, then it jumps, and then it stabilizes. So this is the reason we do this, um, this approach. So the ROIC, return on invested capital, is we take the return, which is the no pat, divided by invested capital, operating capital. And we copy that across. So we see a constant ROIC in this case because we've kept these relationships stable. All right, so that is the projecting free cash flows. And now we're going to do horizon value. Horizon value, as we saw, we have a formula. And so we start with what is the cash flow for next year? 
And so we take it for the ending period right there. 48 is the current year. The next year is, so this is um, current and uh, grow. And this is next. So grow at 0.05 long-term growth rate. So this year times one plus growth rate is next year. The terminal value calculation is we take that number divided by open parens the WAC of nine minus long-term growth rate of five percent five. And that is our terminal value. All right, so now we can generate the PV of cash flows for years one through four. So that we can use our handy NPV formula. And we start with the rate, and that is the WAC at 9%, comma, the time period, which is uh, one through four, and the free cash flows. Close friends, enter. So that's 64, and then we get the pre fee of the horizon. So we, this we, since it's a single payment, PV of the rate is 9%, comma, the number of periods, which is four, comma, the payment, which is zero, comma, the future value, which we just arrived right there, close friends. So oops, let's change the sign. Our total valuation is five, uh, 957. We add to it our marketable securities. And then we subtract from it our debt. Then we subtract from it our preferred stock. And we divide by 10. And that's 80. So that's $80 per share using this method. Okay, so we'll recap what we did. We made some assumptions right here that will enable us to do financial projections. We did those projections here to get to a free cash flow. And we can get to year four horizon value right here. And we can use those numbers to get a present value and then go through the math we've already done before of adding back non-operating assets, subtracting non-operating liabilities, uh, subtracting preferred stock, getting to common equity and price per share. So one thing you might notice here is that our return on invested capital is 8% when our weighted average cost of capital is 9. That's a very significant uh, problem in this case or any company where the required return of your investors is greater than what you're actually generating. And we're projected to do this forever. And so this is really an unsustainable business model where the investors will not stay put for many years. They may have some patience, but not a lot, certainly not to infinity, where you year in, year out, do not generate sufficient return to meet the expectations of the debt and equity holders. So this is actually an example of a nice looking model that leads to a, a result that cannot, cannot happen, right? Because we would not have investors stay put for infinite amount of time. All right, so that is scenario one with no change. So we just mentioned that ROIC is less than wax. so what can we do about it? Well, if you're looking at the key assumptions and the driver of the model, there aren't that many. One was a sales growth rate, and perhaps we need to find ways to grow faster. Next was the profitability. Perhaps we can find ways to get the NOPAT as a percent of sales to go up. Third, perhaps we could be a little more efficient or a lot more efficient in our operating capital so that we can operate with uh, less capital because we're more efficient in managing our balance sheet. And finally, our 
uh, cost of capital. Perhaps it's too high. Perhaps we can do things to reduce the WAC. Or what's more plausible, a combination of the four of uh, tweaking up growth rates and increasing profitability and being a little more efficient in running your business and changing your debt uh, debt so that you have more leverage, thereby reducing your way to average cost of capital. So that's probably something we would look at if we were doing this for real, which is to derive a solution to this problem of RIC not meeting WAC expectations.